So let us learn about OPS, what OPS are and what is the useful of OPS. An OPS is nothing but a methodology to create or write a program using certain classes and objects. And what are these certain classes and objects? But before that, let us understand what does this object oriented programming means. It is nothing but it is a com combination or the collection of certain data and the instruction to process these data. So when you perform the operations on these data, these are nothing but the state and certain behavior. So that is nothing but your objects. So an object is nothing but which defines your certain state and behavior. For an example, anything in the world has certain states. For an example, the projector, the pen, the desk, dog, human, anything that you consider. Let us just take an example of a dog. What does a dog do? What its behavior is? What kind of a state it has? A state is nothing but it has certain name, it has its breed, it has its color and the behavior may be it's running, sleeping and so on. So these are certain state and behavior where an object is nothing but an instance of a class. You can just say what is a software object and a real time object. A software object and a real time object has certain similar characteristics. What are these similar characteristics? What are these state and behavior characteristics? Like in real world, you have certain state and behavior. In software, you have certain fields and methods where the state of the object are stored in fields and where the behavior of objects are stored in methods. Then what is a class? What a class is? How you can define a class? A class is nothing but a combination of all these objects that you use or you can define it as a blueprint or a template that defines the state and behavior of these objects and then an object is created from this class and what it says what are the programming paradigms. The next one is nothing but what are the techniques or the paradigms available to write a program where you perform or where you give certain instructions to a computer to perform certain actions in order to resolve a problem. So you have few of them where the first one would be unstructured programming. What is this unstructured programming? In this case, you write or you provide the set of instructions or commands in the main method and this instruction or commands which perform on the data is stored in at global level. So once you perform any action on the data that is stored at global level, all the changes will be done at the global level. It will make the changes in the main code and when the code increases, the maintenance problem also arises and this process is very slow where it also does not allow you to reuse the code. The next one would be your programming. What kind of a programming? One is your unstructured programming. The next one is your structured programming. What happens in case of structured programming? In case of structured programming, we write the instructions set by step, right? So you write first instruction, then you write the second instruction and third and so on. And how would the execution be? The execution will also follow the same thing. It will execute the program in step by step instruction. Therefore, it makes your process slow that is your development or when it runs a program this particular time will increase and the process will become slow and it follows top down approach. So in order to overcome all these disadvantages we have come in concept of OPS that is your object oriented program. In case of object oriented programming it allows you certain advantages. What are the advantages of having this OPS? The first and the main advantage of having your OPS is nothing but inheritance which is nothing but you can reuse the code. You do not have to write the code again and again. If you have already written the code, you can use the code from the existing class and prepare the new class. You do not have to write the program from the scratch. That is the main advantage. Second, it provides you the sense of security. This security is nothing but by data hiding. It means it protects the data from the outside classes. That is the concept of your data hiding. And the next advantage would be that if you have a large project, how would you divide the project? How would you work on this project? So then you can divide the work or divide the project based on these objects. So these are the certain advantages of OPS and in the going forward videos, we'll learn in detail what are the concept of OPS, what are they, what each of them does and how they are useful in our computer programming.